As the pandemic took hold last year, it quickly became clear that the job of a certified nursing assistant is among the most dangerous and difficult in the United States. CNAs provide the majority of direct care to individuals residing in long-term and post-acute care in this country. Their experiences over the past 20 months have been both exhausting and traumatic. From long hours and double shifts, illnesses due to the virus, and loss of income due to quarantine requirements, their stories represent a true workforce crisis in America and a real need for change. I've seen a lot that didn't make it from COVID. We have fought the best battle that we could fight during this pandemic. You're trying to take care of that many sick people with just a few of you left. And they're asking, you know, am I gonna die? Help me, I, I can't breathe. There was one certain resident um, whew, that I had, um, and I'll never forget the day. A couple of days later, uh, I heard that she passed away. We've lost 38 of our residents, and that's just something you don't really just get over. Most of them, dementia, Alzheimer's, they don't remember who you are day to day. This one certain gentleman re remembered me and I was in another resident's room and my coworker came and asked me to help her with him because he just wasn't waking up. And so I went in, we cleaned him up, still wouldn't wake up. And I knew right then and there that he was gone. She told me that she thinks she's not going to make it. <laughs> And then she, she said that if I can give her, if I can give her a hug, and uh, that was the last time I worked before I got COVID, and a couple of days later, uh, I heard that she passed away. One day, it looks like, okay, my dog, I'm so happy he's getting better. I'm so happy his, his O2 is high, you know? Then the next day you get off, go home and get a little rest. You come back and you look forward to seeing that patient, you know? Cause that patient was doing better when you left. Only for them to say, as soon as you clocked out, that patient O2 dropped to 70 and they didn't make it. That has happened a lot. We are the only ones who have been by bedside as much as anybody could be. And we've put our lives on, on hold. We've put our patients and our jobs before our own families. And if that doesn't show true dedication and uh, being a hero, I don't know what what does? Me being essential, it really didn't help us um, in the long run. Um, all it basically did was make us work harder for very little pay. We went through a outbreak three times here. Um, we had 136 employees and we ended up at one time with our second outbreak with 57 residents who were sick. Made a major change on all of us. I think because we've had no outlets to deal with what we went through during that time. People think that after the pandemic's over, COVID's over, that all these people are gonna flock back to being a CNA, and they're not. The average CNA doesn't make a lot of money. And that's just, I mean, it's the nature of the beast. You know that when you live there, when you choose to become a CNA. So a lot of us start traveling. A lot of CNAs left there to make more money because of travel contracts. But when you do leave to make more money, what you leave behind is a big, big, big hole to fill. I can see things such as CNAs leaving the profession to go to such places as McDonald's or Targets or Walmart, and they can make 18 to $25 an hour, and they are not coming back. We was the only facility who did not offer hazardous pay. 
So it made it difficult for um, our family um, to actually try to get sources of food and stuff like that. The fact that they want to make a livable wage also work their 40 hours and be able to go home and have good benefits to support their family. The ones that were left to stay there and work were worn out. It, it was, you're talking 16 hours a day, seven days a week sometimes. And, and they were really, really burnt. But at the same time, they didn't want to turn their back on the residents that they love and care for. 